So this lecture is going to be about the chemical potential, mu, and sort of what mu is for and how we can use it. So what is mu? Let me give you the definition first. The formal definition of mu, and you always talk about mu for some specific substance, so maybe the mu of, of chemical A, it's defined as the change in Gibbs function when you increase the amount of that chemical holding the other stuff constant, so temperature and pressure, for instance. Okay, so for a pure substance, we can see this is just going to have units of joules per mole. This is just the, the Gibbs energy per mole, the molar Gibbs energy. It's going to have a more complicated uh, set of concepts surrounding it when we go to mixtures, but it's still going to have this definition. So this definition is always true. So this is, this is a really important definition. So if we increase the amount of A in a system, the chemical potential of A is how much the Gibbs energy goes up when we increase the amount of A. All right, so when we have this, this changes our differential for G. So the Gibbs function, remember we said was, uh, the differential of the Gibbs function was minus SDT plus BDP. And if we write G as a function of T and P, and then use that to write dg. We see dg is equal to the change in Gibbs function with temperature at constant pressure times the infinitesimal change in temperature plus the change in Gibbs function with, uh, with uh, pressure at constant temperature times the infinitesimal change in pressure. So if we add up the, the pressure change term and the temperature change term, we get the overall change. And we can see when we write this that we can identify the negative of the entropy with that partial derivative, and we can identify the uh, volume with that partial derivative. So we can see that entropy and volume are actually our partial derivatives of the Gibbs function. All right, that's fine, but that's not the whole story if we can change the number of moles. So in a closed system, we, you know, we seal a container and the number of moles are, are fixed. But in an open system, we can have the number of moles change. We can increase or decrease the number of moles. So in that case, we have to write G is a function of pressure, temperature, and moles. And so we can say DG is going to be, and at first it looks the same, right? We have uh, the change in Gibbs function with temperature. We have the change in Gibbs function with pressure. But then we have to throw on another term, don't we? We have to say we could change the Gibbs function by changing the number of moles. So we have dGdn at constant T and P changing number of moles. So we're adding on this extra term. Well, we can, it's, it's kind of unwieldy to write all these partial derivatives. So we write this, we normally write them out with the names for the partial derivatives. So we have, um, we have uh, uh, the change in the Gibbs function with pressure or with temperature. We already said that was the negative of the entropy. So we have minus SDT. For this term over here, we have plus BDP. And finally, we have plus mu dn. Oops, so it looks funny. Let's try that again, plus mu dn, okay? And uh, we'd have to write uh, a term like this for every substance in the system. Now, since uh, in chapter four, we're just talking about pure systems, we don't have to worry about this. We only have one component in there, so we can just have one term. So that's the chemical potential. 